Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Advanced Charts Building Custom Visualization Experiences. You're gonna see some killer demos today and this is gonna be a little bit of a different webinar. It's like a lot of show and tell. There's so much code that I wanted to give you guys a lot of examples and then you can just download these and kind of look at the code yourself and figure out how we kind of tied everything together. I'm gonna to do a little bit of a demo taking something from App Builder and adding a little bit of code at the end to show you how easy it is to do some of the capabilities of the charts, but there is a lot of neat things to show today. So again, my name is Jason Barris. I'm the Senior VP of Developer Tools here at Infragistics Online and in the live Q&A, Draftco, Pablo, Constantine, Brian, probably Martin, maybe Graham, a lot of today's presentation is because of Martin and Graham, they sort of drive all of the capabilities and features that we deliver in charts. So a lot of these advanced things that you probably would not even think of doing, this is where they live. So uh, I wanna thank them for all the help they gave today in today's uh, samples that I'm gonna show you. So what are we gonna do? First, I'm gonna show you where to find a lot of the chart stuff that's available online. So we have a bunch of samples that are already available. There's new samples that you're gonna to see today. There's documentation that you're also going to see where you can find things. Uh, then I'm gonna show and tell on cool features. I'm gonna do a demo, again, from App Builder over into Visual Studio and wrap up. Quick housekeeping, answer uh, or ask questions, sorry, in the Q&A or chat. We prefer the chat and make sure you select to everyone so then everyone can see your question because they probably have the same question as you do. And we will answer or one of the guys will answer. The recording and this deck will be sent tomorrow. So let's get started. So grid features for every app need. This is the same slide I show in every webinar. I just wanna highlight that if you're doing grids, Infragistics and Ignite UI is the place to be. Everything that you can imagine is in this grid. And if it's not there, please let us know. All of our development process is public. Go to github.com forward slash Ignite UI and add a feature request or look at what features we're actually working on. Look at our roadmap, look at the open issues, but we really want you to use this grid and push this grid in ways that maybe the grid wasn't meant to be used. So please let us know how you're using it and let us know what you would like to see in the grid and then chart features for every app need. Our chart is highly extensible. The way that our chart is designed is we have essentially two core charts. We have a data chart and we have a category chart. The data chart is the beast that has every feature, every extensibility, everything that you can imagine that you would ever need in a chart. The category chart is a subset of those capabilities to do category axis based charts like spline charts, area charts, column charts, step charts, waterfall charts, things like that, all the basic business charts. And that's where literally you throw a data set at the chart and it does everything for you. It'll render the chart. You don't have to even set like what fields you wanna use. It just is all automagic. But between those charts, you have all the capabilities that you need to build out amazing experiences. And then we also have geospatial maps. We have gauges, of course we have pie charts, we have tree maps. So all of the visualizations that your customers need or that you might need to deliver a great experience, either business, scientific, we have a financial chart, we do ship in Ignite UI and in Infragistics Ultimate. So if you have charting needs, and even hopefully after today, if you've never used our charts, you'll be inspired by some of the stuff that you can do with our charts. So with that, let's get into a demo and highlight some of these cool capabilities and see how you can use charts in your applications today. The first example that I wanna highlight is an oldie but a goodie. And I apologize because I'm running this through remote desktop. So it's maybe not as perfectly crisp as it would normally be if it was running locally, but I run a Mac uh, with parallels and WPF just doesn't quite do well on the Mac M2 uh, with parallels. So I'm running this on my desktop machine. But this is a killer example. We did it years ago and it really highlights some of the capabilities of the visualizations that ship with 
of the product. So if I look at this, this is a map up here on the top. Um, we've got some grids over on the right with some different spark line controls and bullet graph controls. Each one of these has like rich tool tips. I can click on items and when I click on items, they highlight in the map. If I click on the salesperson, uh, nothing happens there. If I click on a location, my chart on the bottom here is updating based on that location. But what's neat here is if I drill into an area like the mountain region, the map actually refreshes and it sort of zooms into that region. If I wanna look at a particular state like Wyoming, I can click on Wyoming and I can select this particular um, auto dealer in Wyoming and I can see the figures by salesperson or by dealer uh, and location and then what they actually sell there. Here on the bottom, I can always do a range select on certain data, zoom in and zoom out. I can look at revenue um, versus volume. I can look at data by quarter, by month, by week. And if I wanna go back up to my region, I just select the region here and all regions, I select all of the regions. So the Southeast seems to be a hot spot. Florida, there's a lot happening. I can drill into Florida. I select this guy and you'll also see as I select dealerships which are sized by bubble size. So if I look at the tool tip here, this is 30 million in sales. The small guy is 2.6 million in sales. So all of this is through tool tips in the uh, geospatial map control which is part of the data visualization toolkit. And as I select items, you can see them updating on the right hand side. So this is just an amazing example of really pushing the limits of data visualization and what you can do with the product. And what's cool about this guy here as well, if I click on the pivot grid view, here we have a pivot grid. And of course, this is a standard pivot. I can drill in. And as I drill in, I continue to see additional data. Uh, so we have things like filters. So if I just wanna look at Honda, Mazda, McLaren, click OK, the grid refreshes, and I'm just looking at that data so I can drill in and look at all of the information for periods for those specific filters. If I go back to the map and I click on New York, for example, I'm drilling into the New York area. Looks like there's a lot happening in Maryland. And anyway, just a killer example. I uh, just love this example when we did it and it still is a great example today. So the question is, where the heck do you get this example? And that's what I wanna go into next. So let's go ahead and minimize. Actually, I'll just close my remote desktop here and I will pop open my uh, Mac uh, parallels here. And let's go over to uh, the browser. And in the browser, I am going to go to infragistics.com. At infragistics.com, if you go to the learn and support dropdown, you're going to see reference applications. Reference applications are where we have all of these great examples of, you know, how to use the product, but they're meant to inspire you to take what we did and then make something happen even better with it. So for example, I'll highlight some of my favorite um, data visualization ones. But before I do that, let me click on WPF here. I click on WPF. There's the auto sales dashboard that I just showed you. So here it is, you click download and it will uh, download locally and you can go ahead and run this, look at the code, everything's there for you to do it. It's using a nice infragistics theme. I think it's the Metro theme with some blue on it using our resource washer uh, and it's, it's really slick. So if I go back to sample applications, some other ones that I really wanted to highlight today, the US presidential election dashboard. This is something we did, I think this is back now, in, uh, well, it was Donald Trump versus Joe Biden, so 2020. And you can see that we've got some map visualization here uh, with custom tool tips talking about what the electors or who the electors voted for. But let's look at a hex map of the same visualization. So the hex map is in the shape of the United States, but it's giving us just a sort of proportional view or not proportional, but a consistent view of each state and then the number of electors and who they voted for in those states. If I look at a tree map, I've got Biden, the Democrat versus Trump, the Republican. If I select a, a, a particular state, I can drill into it. If I left click, I'm back up to the top. If I wanna look at previous elections like 2008, Obama versus John McCain, 1992, Bill Clinton versus George Bush, 
Uh, this is uh, 1988. George Bush really crushed it. Wow. Michael Dukakis. I think one of these, like Ronald Reagan, just did amazing. Yeah, look at Ronald Reagan here. 525 to 13 uh, back in the good old days. But you can see here, this is a killer example. It's showing geospatial maps with other UI components and selectors. And all of this code is available up on the web. We have some other things here too. So let's see, what does that guy do? Oh, that just ships you over to uh, the homepage. I thought there was a theme switcher, but maybe there's not. All right, let's go back to our sample applications. There was another one here that I really liked. It was a jQuery sample and it was called the ER dashboard. So let me go and open this guy up and I wanna launch this sample. So the ER dashboard is using um, our tile manager control. So this is a, a grid with some nice visualizations. And as I click items, they're kind of coming to the forefront, which is really neat the way this works. But this is about data visualization. So how are we using data visualizations here? We've got a bunch of drop downs that are showing charts kind of spreading across um, the canvas, animating in, animating out but it shows you that the types of experiences that you can deliver are many and the way that visualizations can interact with other types of components on your screen just flows into the user experience that you can give to your end users. So here again, just more types of visualizations. Very cool demo. This is a, one of my favorites. It's an oldie, but it is definitely a good one. And let me scroll down the COVID 19 dashboard is another really rich example. This guy here is showing, again, geospatial maps. This is data that is updated as of Friday, March 10th, 2023. So we're pulling in live data from GitHub, but you can see it's just absolutely beautiful the way the tool tips work, the way that the charts look with the markers and, and the whole experience is great. If I select items on the left, they zoom into different regions and it's just a really nice visualization. Of course, COVID still lingers, but this is up to date. It's a beautiful dashboard. And this is using all of Infragistics data visualization components to actually show how this works. If I click over here, we can jump over to the light theme. This is the dark theme. Very, very cool. So the COVID-19 dashboard is a great example of geospatial mapping with live data coming in from GitHub. And there was one more example here. The campaigns uh, or the marketing dashboard is a very nice dashboard. Uh, this uh, stock chart app is also a very nice dashboard. The cash flow app is a nice dashboard. Let's take a look at the React stock chart app. We'll launch this sample. And this guy here, again, is showing you things like range select, our zoom bar on the bottom. Uh, you've got the uh, ability to view single charts, multiple charts. We're loading up different stock types. The way our financial chart works is you've got overlays, trend lines, uh, volume indicators, standalone indicators. So you can pile this up with as much or as little as you want to deliver whatever type of information you need to to your users but it's a very powerful chart it does a lot and this is a straight up financial chart so it does uh, uh really understand open um high low close data and it will plot it for you very easily and i can change this to like a bar chart auto is the default i can do line i can do a column chart so based on how you want your user experience uh, these data visualizations are really cool so those are all online and those are all at the sample applications area. Where you wanna go if you're just getting started is you pick your platform from the main menu, like here I'll pick Angular. And on the Angular homepage, you're always gonna see a grid first on all of our pages. And then you will see view all Angular grid samples, scroll down a little bit. Then we talk about the charts and now I can view all of the Angular chart samples. So on the main chart page is where you'll see all of the different types of charts that are available. So for example, if you're doing um, sort of uh, scientific data and you wanna use a polar chart, um, you can have a polar chart. You've got the scatter chart, shape chart takes things like shapes, like uh, here's an airplane. 
map. And of course, all of these can be interactive, clickable, et cetera. The idea is we're giving you all of these visualizations, all of the events that you might wanna use, and then you use them however you'd like in your application. So how do you know what you can do with all these charts? You've got the chart API, which you can dig into, and then you can also drill into the chart features. So for example, if I look at um, access layouts, there are going to be specific examples here with different access layout options that you have. So let's do um, an inside right, and you can see that now uh, my access labels are on the inside right. If I select this guy and we do auto, they're gonna be on the left on the outside. So each one of these samples will have different options that will allow you to customize the axis however you'd like. This is another one where you can have the axis labels cross at any point um, within the visualization itself. And again, these samples and everything that we're doing here is really designed to inspire the types of apps that you might need to build. So you don't have to search all over Google for something that might do what you're kind of after. Um, most likely you'll be able to do it uh, with the Ignite UI chart with one of the samples. And then all of the samples here, you just click edit in code sandbox, and then you can jump right into code sandbox and run that sample um, directly. The nice thing about code sandbox is that if you open something up in code sandbox, you can then download the zip file for that exact sample. We're gonna give you all of the code here on how to do the HTML TypeScript, et cetera, for every sample on every platform, but you can also download a running sample right from Code Sandbox. Then if I scroll down, always take a look at our geographic maps, all the features for the geographic map. So just a lot of neat capabilities with mapping. You can make these maps look really beautiful. We support various types of tiles. So, uh, basically anything that you wanna do. You'll notice here as I zoom in, I'm just continuing to zoom into street level essentially for this particular visualization. And I'm going in and going in and yeah, right there, Butler University, great school. And we scroll down, of course, gauges, uh, bullet graphs, linear graphs, radial gauges, et cetera. So anyway, here on the website is where you would find everything for every platform, Angular, uh, Blazor, jQuery, React, Web Components, all the samples are going to be the same. You're just gonna have different code for that particular platform that you're looking at. Now for today, we did some custom samples and I wanna show off a few of these examples that Martin worked on and some of them are really, really clever. So this one is called Blazor Map Chart Integration. And this is a typical experience that you run into when you want to plot out different components on a page and do some level of master detail. I'm gonna highlight some important areas here. I'm not gonna go through all of the code, but remember I said we have the data chart and the category chart. You're gonna see a combination of both of those charts today. Here is the data chart, and this is done in Blazor. This is the IGB data chart. So the data chart is created in a way where you are defining your X and Y axis, you're defining the type of series, like a column series, line series, spline series that you wanna render, how many series that you wanna render. Um, you'll specify tool tips, whether you want tool tips or not, you'll specify a legend. So you're actually crafting this chart to be exactly how you want. And in the case here of Blazor, what you're doing is you're giving the chart uh, a name and then within your code, you'll reference this, you know, in this case, the filtered column series, the selected column series, and this has to do with selecting areas of a chart and then highlighting things in the grid or in the map, et cetera. This is the geographic map component. And then the geographic map component, again, you're telling it what type of series that you wanna have. Here we have a symbol series. And the way that this uh, map and charts are set up is the data is bound to the controls multiple times to show filtered out and filtered in data, which is really, really slick, which is why these samples are so cool. So in this case, if I run this sample, enough looking at that code, you always wanna see what this is supposed to look like. Here we've got a map over on the right-hand side. I have a chart here on the left and I have a grid here on the bottom. You'll notice that I have some items selected in purple here. And in the map, I also have some items selected in purple. 
So as I select items in the map, or as I select items in the grid, they will highlight back and forth between the two components. So here if I do a range select of these items, now they've highlighted in the grid, and I can see what those data values are for those specific items. I also have this filter bar up here. If I zoom this filter bar, you'll notice that my grid changed, this changed, and this changed. So this filtered out all of the other data points. So when you saw the filtered series types that were being bound to these components, we have like the original, we have the filtered in and the filtered out data. So it's really clever approach to do something pretty rich on the client side. And in this case, if I select and deselect items, they will change over here in the map. At the same time, if I range select items in the grid, my chart gets updated. So I can do a multi-select here in the grid. And based on what I'm clicking, those records are updated as well in the chart itself. So this is a very cool like master master type dashboard showing off interactions between a map, a column chart, and a grid. Very cool sample, I really like it. And looking at this code, you will learn a lot about how the interactions can occur between these components. Chart draw, this is another really slick one. A lot of customers have this request where they say, hey, I want to be able to change the value of a data point. And I will always say, why don't you just have a grid or something that pops up and then you change the underlying value and then let it reflect in the chart itself. Whoops, this is the wrong sample. Sorry, this is not the one I wanted to show you. Um, so with this sample, where you can actually edit chart uh, data points, which I think is really unique, and it's another approach versus doing a data entry screen. So let me run this guy. And here you will see that I've got a line chart. And you'll notice here I've got in my tooltip the editing point value. So if I select this and I drag it, you'll notice that I'm changing the underlying data value. So why is this useful? Because the use case is you want to let users for whatever reason, whatever your use case is, modify the way data is looking in the chart. And then that data is getting updated back to the data source. I personally have never had a great reason to do this but I talk to hundreds of customers a year, thousands over the years, and this has come up many, many times where how can I edit the data in the chart? Okay, well, guess what? With this sample, take a look at the code and you can change data point values with simple drag and drop. And then you can persist these. And then of course, the next time the chart loads up, you will see your new values. So let's now go back to chart draw annotations. And this is pretty slick. So let's open up this sample. And in this demo, we are using some of the new features that I've highlighted in the webinars around the new toolbar. So in this case, we're gonna have a draw slope action, a draw range action, and a draw horizontal line action. And if you were at the webinar, maybe last month when we first introduced the new chart toolbar, you learned that the toolbar has different action buttons that you can use and there's different action types so you could have a button an option button a drop down you can have groups you can show or hide what's actually already on the toolbar itself so what comes default with the toolbar but in this case we've got the draw range action the draw slope action and the draw horizontal line action and these are going to interact now between the toolbar which is now bound to this particular chart. So let's go ahead and run this. And this is my standard toolbar across the top. So this is the new chart toolbar. We've gone over all of these actions in previous webinars. You have your uh, zoom in, zoom out, and of course my reset. Here I have the new tools that we added in this sample, range area, slope line, and horizontal line. So in this case, if I do a range area, you can see that I'm dragging down and I'm highlighting a section of the chart. And as I'm dragging, note that the marker in the Y axis is the mid range between the stock price and the range area, or I'm sorry, in the range area. So it's right now the high is 529, the low is 513. 
and it's giving me like 520, 519, et cetera. So I'll highlight this range. Now I wanna add a slope line. Let's say I do a slope here and I want this slope line, whoops, it's going a little crazy on me here. I want the slope line to be right there on this particular data point on 7.3. And now I can do a horizontal line, which in this case, and maybe when you're doing stock trades, that horizontal line will indicate you know, when something should trigger a trade or not trigger a trade or an event occurs, et cetera. But here I can simply drag this down and place it wherever I want. And you'll notice that my tooltip is updating values based on where I'm dragging. So the precision here is pretty tight. So this is really slick. It just expands, again, what you can do with different layers on top of the chart to do data stories, to essentially do whatever you want in terms of communicating to your users or giving them customizations now between the new toolbar and interactions on the chart itself. So this is a great example, really slick. So finally, let's take a look at, uh, or actually let me make sure I covered everything here. Editing, we're gonna look at custom selection in a minute. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna jump over to App Builder. And in App Builder, I've taken one of our samples and I've modified it a little bit. Uh, app Builder is a great tool to build your end-to-end -end app, use one of our samples to sort of get started and then customize it like I'm gonna do today. So here in my webinars folder, I've got the Health Vault Webinar 02. The Health Vault is one of our sample apps called the Health Vault. And you can see it's a nice looking application. We have a lot of nice applications here that you can start with. But I have the Health Vault 02. I'm gonna edit this. And what I did on the Health Vault 02 was I modified a dashboard type page, uh, which used to have six charts. I brought it down to three charts. And these three charts are a dietary report. So this is a, a healthcare application. So I figured, well, Let's take some data from the Northwind database and kind of make it into dietitian data. If I go over to my Northwind cloud data source and I take a look at some of the category stuff here. So I've got category summary by customer, category by product, most popular product. These are all the ones that I'm using in my report. So for example, if I try this out and I type in beverages, and I execute this, this will return a data set of the total sales by customer and the number of orders by customer for the beverages category. So it's just some basic stuff. So here, if I look at these individual charts and I look at the data, they are bound to my Northwind category reporting. And this one's bound to Northwind, or I'm sorry, uh, category sales summary. This one is bound to categories ordered by year with the parameter of category name. This one is bound to categories ordered by country with a property of category name. Now, when I set this data source up, if we go look at Northwind category reporting and we configure endpoints, I'll select this guy to test it out. I I typed in beverage, right? So beverage is what, or beverages is what's used as the default. So what I can do here is um, I can download this. I actually already downloaded it uh, in lieu of time here. And in my charting webinar, Health Vault Webinar 01, this is the app. And I'll just go ahead and run it real quick and you can see what it looks like. And of course, why I like this is because it also has some beautiful custom themes. I really like the color schemes of this. So Andy on the design team did a nice job. There's my dietary analysis uh, screen. And then here are some charts. But what I want to do here is I want to modify this. So when I click a chart here, it updates these two charts with whatever I clicked on. So if I click on dairy products, I want it to go ahead and update that. And then I want it to have the, uh, give some indication of what actually got clicked. So let's go to our pages. We're gonna go to dietary report. And in this case, you'll see I have this, uh, these headers, dietary analysis, most popular. These are my charts. So here I've got the uh, IGB category chart. 
Here's yearly consumption. This is the category chart. And if you remember the data chart, it was all like I set up my axis and all this other stuff. Here's just the category chart. You'll notice I'm really not doing much. I had some properties set in App Builder, but um, I'm not setting up an axis. I'm not setting up labels. I'm not really telling it what data to use. None of that stuff. It's all um, automatically done for me. But what I want to do is on this uh, particular uh, chart, which is my category sales summary, the chart on the left, I want to respond to the series pointer down event. So on series pointer down, I want to call a function called update charts. And what update charts is going to do is change the parameter to my queries. And what are my queries? If we go over to services and I look at my Northwind category reporting service, you'll note that here category name is a parameter sent to my URL and it is hard coded because that's what I had in App Builder. So category name beverages, category name beverages. I need that to reflect the correct category name. So let's go back here. So we're going to do that in update charts. But I'm also going to change a few things here. I'm going to say for at sign category. And we're just going to reuse this variable in multiple places. So most popular space category yearly consumption for category and we'll make that look a little nicer and country consumption for category so that's going to be a variable so when my bindings change this will get updated how does that work in blazor well what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a private string and i'm just going to say it's category all right so what do i have to do next so by default, when this application loads, all three of these functions execute to pull in data from the cloud. What I wanna do is do a private async void update charts. And for update charts, the event that we're passing from the chart series pointer down to this function is called the IGB domain chart series pointer event args and that's going to be our args. So it's very simple how this works. Now, the type that we're dealing with here is a categories sales summary. So if I go to this definition, here I've got my category sales summary. This is that first chart on the left-hand side. It's got category name and total product. So that's what I want to do here. So what I'll do is I'll say var selected items, selected item, equals args dot item as what? As category sales summary. So that's going to be our type. So now I can get the properties of category sales summary off of my selected item. So here I can say that category, category equals selected item dot what? Oh, dot category name. And we want to make it look cool because everything else is in uppercase. So we'll say to upper like so. So now whenever I click that chart or the, the uh, column in that chart, my category should re be reflected. So if I run this guy, let's take a look and make sure that is happening. So let's go to our menu. I'm going to go to my dietary analysis report and I'm gonna click this guy here and you can see that it's updating. So seafood, confections, pretty cool, pretty cool, all right. So this is so simple. Now I'm just gonna cut, whoops, wait. I'm gonna do a control X to cut, control V to paste, and then you guessed it, I am going to pass the same parameter, selected item dot category name as a parameter here like so and that will replace the hard-coded beverages and then since this is blazer we'll call state has changed and we are done so let's hit run and that is it in five lines of code i should have this whole thing tied together and working let's go to dietary analysis you'll notice these charts are not loaded Let's click dairy products. 
There's my dairy products data. Let's click confections. There's my confections data. Seafood, there's my seafood data. So just totally cool, totally slick, and uh, really does a nice master detail dashboard. So then finally, there's one more thing to show. I asked Martin, I said, hey Martin, I would really like this to not just update that text because that still doesn't maybe give the user an indication that that item was selected. Can you improve how the selection works on the chart? And he's like, of course I can. So let's go look at our page, our dietary report. And what you'll see is that what Martin did is he modified the brushes on my uh, initial category chart, the one that's on the left-hand side, to change based on the item that is clicked on. So he added a little bit of code here and he's tracking what's getting clicked on and what's not getting clicked on. He's looping through those items and he's just changing the color. So I, I got this code and I said to Graham and Mark, I'm like, oh, well, can you just make it like one line of code? And they're like, yes, they're in the middle of updating selection on the category chart. And in the next release, you'll just have one line of code to do what I'm gonna show you right now, which is just amazing because it really just elevates what you can do with the chart. So here is our app again. This is the exact same app. Martin added about 20 lines of code for me. Dietary analysis. Now when I select this guy, it is highlighted in a different color of pink and it's better. And I even have a tool tip that is giving me information. So really, really slick, much better than just populating a variable based on what's selected because the user might not see this, but they can certainly see that bright pink is selected and that's meat and poultry. So this is killer. I absolutely love this. And I think this is like icing on the cake for some of the more advanced stuff you can do with the charts. I mean, I showed you a bunch of advanced stuff today, but this is really cool because it kind of hits mainstream. You might not be doing stock trading and you might want might not need to edit data points, but hopefully some of those samples that are up on the uh, website already, like the geospatial mapping, like the COVID dashboard, like change the word COVID to whatever and swap it out with your data and you have the same experience that you can deliver. And then of course, this sample here, which started an app builder and ends up uh, with a few lines of code and you have something really cool and useful for your end users. So let's jump back to the slides. Okay, so hopefully you got the idea. Killer examples or killer capabilities of the chart. I know I went fast, but we only had uh, a little bit of time today. You know, these webinars are only supposed to be 30 minutes and I always go over, but please answer the poll as it pops up and as you reflect on some of those cool features in the chart, Thank you for asking all the questions in the chat and the Q&A. Hopefully they were all answered uh, to your liking. Uh, and yeah, the, the, the poll is critical because that is what drives features and capabilities that we deliver in the product. So please take some time to answer the poll. And I actually haven't shared results from the polls in a while. So maybe the next webinar, I will share some of those results. So call to action get Blazor and App Builder today, and not just Blazor, you saw Angular, jQuery, it doesn't really matter, you saw WPF. Um, so you saw everything today that we have to offer uh, in Infragistics Ultimate, and of course, App Builder, which just accelerates the delivery of your applications. If you were at the last webinar and you saw the sneak peek of some of the stuff that's coming in our September release, September is right around the corner. It's already August, last week of August. So time is flying and we are working on some great new features and we can't wait to get them into your hands. So the next webinar, September 6th, drive 10X ROI with low code and app builder. Uh, September 7th is a reveal webinar, building dashboard templates in reveal with slingshot. I actually should say for reveal with slingshot. So I'm gonna show you how those two products can work together. September 20th, integrating REST APIs for data visualizations and JavaScript apps. That's specifically for Reveal. But again, Reveal, the underpinnings of Reveal is the charts that you saw today and the data visualizations that you saw today. So if you're looking for embedded BI, 
in your applications, please take a look at one of these webinars. And then September 25th, using hierarchical data controls in App Builder. So maybe six months ago, we added capabilities to do hierarchical binding to things like tree, uh, tree controls, tree views, uh, card views, list controls, things like that. So how does that all work? How does it come together? That's what we're gonna go over in that webinar. So again, thank you very much. I know you have a lot of options for your time. I appreciate you attending today. My email is jasonb at infragistics.com. Check out App Builder at infragistics.com forward slash products forward slash App Builder. We're gonna stay on for a few more minutes to finish answering questions and give you time to answer the poll. But again, I appreciate your time. Thank you for attending and we will see you at the next webinar. Thanks again.